Hey, um, I'm back, guys. The, um, the other video cut off because I ran out of space on my, um, on my phone. Ran out of space. But, um, I guess this is actually going to be a two-part video. Um, but I really don't want to erase the other one and just start all over and make one whole video because it's a lot of stuff I said in there that meant a lot to me and just repeating it again feels fake. But um, I'm trying to pick up where I left off. And um, uh, let's see. Um, I think I was on the, the spirit talk. But um, I felt my brother's spirit heavy on me. It felt like a, almost like a hugging sensation. Not the day, not the um. Not the night that it happened, but the night that it happened, it was hard for me to go to sleep. But the next day, on out, up until a couple of days before his the wake, like once again we had to wake at my house. I felt my brother's spirit heavy, and I started praying. I was I was like a praying talk, if that makes sense. I started saying. All right, Robert, cross over, go home. I kept telling him to go home. What I meant by that is, you know, our dad passed when we were super young. I was two and he was three. It's not much that we remember about him at all, to be honest with you. But he's up in heaven, and our grandma, who, we, who raised us from out of the cooler to, you know, until she passed, we addressed her as mom because... It's true. She's up there in heaven. So I would, I kept praying. I was like, all right, go home. Go home. And what I meant by going home was, you know, go ahead, go to heaven. I kept telling him to, I kept telling him to go home. Go ahead, cross over. Go home, Robert. It's all right. Go be all right. And while I was saying that, I was still crying. I just kept telling him, go ahead, go home. Because I kept feeling his spirit. Now, um... A couple of days before the wake, I noticed that I wasn't feeling his spirit so much. And it was mainly at night, if that makes sense. I don't know why, but it was mainly, I felt them throughout the day, but mainly at night when I would lay down by myself. You know, just laying there thinking. I always had a problem falling to sleep and staying asleep. And that's when my most thoughts would come to me. That's when I'm laying alone in my bed. That's when I have my most thoughts. Was just you know it plays a part of my PTSD and my depression. But anyway, as um excuse me, sorry, as my glasses. But that's when I would feel him the most. So a couple of days before the wake, I noticed that I wasn't that I didn't feel his spirit so much anymore. Now I continually, you know, before the wake, I always I kept saying that same prayer. You know, cross over, Robert, go home, go home. A couple of days before that, before the wait, I didn't feel it no more. And I like to think, I feel like he went ahead and crossed over. Because one of his friends came by my house and we, me and her were talking. And she told me that she had a dream about my brother. And that he was getting dressed. And he had like this light over him. Like, like almost like angel-like light. Like a super glow, and he would he was adjusting his hat because my brother loved to wear hats, and when he would he would fix it all the time, be adjusting his hat. And she said that he was adjusting his hat, and he said, "I'm good. I'm gonna be all right." And then that right there, just he just left. He was gone. He said, "I'm good. I'm gonna be all right. I'm up there about to turn up." Like she said, he said that, and that's so much was his words sound like him. And when she said that. I noticed, like, when she said that, it matched up to when I stopped feeling my brother's spirit so much. That's when I stopped feeling it. Um, yeah, I mean, it's crazy. I've been having, some days are, are good, some are better than others, but I have my days. But I'm just not, like, today is just one of those mornings I'm not having a good morning. You know, I don't want to come on camera crying because I be feeling like that's that shit weak. But I'm having a hard time. 
I'm having a hard time adjusting to my brother being gone. It's still fresh. It's still new. It's only been three weeks. This week make three. Um, mm -mm. Uh, this week makes three weeks. Yesterday, I went to um, down to the courthouse. You know, I'm not gonna dabble in that. But yesterday was that day, and. I was fine yesterday. That today I wake up and it's just heavy on my spirit. Not him, but the thought of my brother being for real, for real gone. I'm having the hardest time. I'm still having the hardest time processing it. I even got this job, you know, working in pet care. You know, um, I thought that if I went back, if I went, I ain't gonna say went back to work because I'm new to this job. But I even went and started this job like a couple of days, a week or so after that happened to my brother because I had cried for days and days, all day long, crying. And I just felt like I need to get on my feet and get going because if I stay stagnant in one spot, I was going to get even deeper into my depression about it. And I, I, I'll never harm myself, but it's like I, I had a dip. But... I'm having the hardest time. It is so crazy. It feels so unreal. Me and my brother did a lot of things together. We were then there homeless together. <laughs> he has five kids. I have four nieces, four beautiful nieces, and one little cool ass nephew. And I just don't want nobody to forget my brother. And I know I'm not. <sighs> His birthday coming up in a couple of days on the 23rd. Hopefully we can all get together and do something. But I feel like I can't necessarily cry in front of everybody. Not because I'm ashamed. Definitely not. I've cried. We've all cried together. You know, especially at the shock of it. But I feel like. When I'm alone is when it really, really hits me. I mean, the day he's here, he sees me at my weakest. He understands. He's giving me so much time. I mean, I forgot to praise him on that. I haven't cooked dinner, guys, and since it happened, I haven't been doing my, you know, my duties as a woman, period. Not even just as a woman, but I, I haven't been able to function. And sometimes I feel like, I feel like, but I went back to work to start working because I felt like if I stay in my house, it's just going to break me down. And it's true. So I had to do something. But I don't know. I figured I'd come back to YouTube and that's going to hopefully help. I just can't stay stagnant in one spot. I'm still grieving and I'm not even rushing it. I'm truly not. But I know me. I know I have to be doing something or I'm just going to break. I've let myself cry for those days that a week or so. And I still cry. I'm not saying I don't cry anymore. I still do, as you guys can probably see now. But it's like today is a bad day. You know? I'm just going to come back with this video as a start because I feel like Grieving is a healing process, and I'm trying to do that. And I have to do normal things, get back to being normal, do what I was doing before this tragedy. And I still talk to my brother every day, especially at night when I'm doing my prayer. When I do.